Hello, so here with a new video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to have a look on storage provisioning in Unis Free. This is for a Dell EMC Power Max. And in the first section, we are going to have a, a small class about the elements of provisioning, and we are going to have true lessons on hands on lab uh, with uh, provisioning and storage group. So, this is the, the elements of provisioning. We have four elements. Uh, the first one is the I group, initiator group, that uh, it contains a host initia initiators, including iSCSI IQNs or WWN school names uh, from uh, Fiber Channel HPAs. Cascade initiator groups are sometimes used for cluster when it's necessary to have both unique volumes and shared volumes presented to the cluster members. Uh, the second element uh, when provisioning is P group, power group. It contains the arrays front end ports uh, to which the host initiators are connected to the network in the case of ice cousin or zoning in the case of fiber channel. Then we have the storage group. The storage group contains the volume that need to be presented to the host or cluster. Cascaded storage group are used when the volumes uh, presented to a host will require separate data for various reasons such as Chrome compressibility, IO profile, data protection requirements, and for logical separation. So the fourth element is the masking view. It ties all the previous three elements together. After they are created, uh, the devices in the storage group are masked to the initiator in the initiator group and mapped to the port group uh, to the ports in the port group. So they are related all each other, uh, initiator group, port group, and storage group into the masking view. Let's take a look into the lab. So here we are in the lab. Let's click on the demo system. Uh, today we are going to log in with SMC credential, which is an admin RBAC uh, user. We are going to work on the PowerMax 0107. And the first lesson is provisioning the storage group. So let's go to the storage, then storage groups. And now let's click on create. The name of our new storage group is going to be company DB Broad. DB underscore broad. The storage resource pool, it's going to be the one. Yep. The surface level of our volumes, it's going to be gold. Uh, let's create four volumes. Each volume is going to be 250 gigabytes, 250. And let's click on next. So this is the storage group. This is the information, uh, sorry, the volume information. Now we have, uh, we, we can select a host here if, if it is already defined, but uh, for this exercise, let's create a new one. So let's click on create host. And here we have the initiators. So let's click on host name. Uh, the name of this host can be demo underscore host. Initiator of type can, is going to be fiber. And let's select the initiators. Uh, for the initiator, we, uh, as this is a demo, we can select uh, the very first uh, worldwide names, WWNs, and pass it here with add button. Let's click on OK. And here we have our new demo hosts uh, selected here. Let's click on Next. And now we can select the port group. Uh, we can create a new one, or we can select an existing one, an existing port group. So here, for example, for this particular uh, server, CRKB2, 
Here we have uh, one power selected. We have several with two. Uh, this particular one uh, has eight powers front. Uh, these are the ports from the front end, the system front end director. director. Uh, let's go back and select new. Uh, for the new, we have the FC preselected here. And let's select mm, this couple of uh, director ports. We are selecting 2C, 1C4 and 2C4. The name of this port group uh, name is going to be a storage group, then underscore PG for port group. Click next. And here we have a summary uh, before we execute uh, the creation of the storage group. Uh, the name of the uh, masking view is also it has a, the standard naming convention which is which is the storage group then underscore and MB for masking view. Uh, here you can see it here. Uh, for the port group is similar company DB prod underscore PG. Here is the demo that we just uh, selected. Uh, we we just select the HPAs and the name of the storage group. Uh, let's click on run now. And this is uh, this little window is going to show you the progress of the of the provisioning. So here we can see on the list what's going on. As we can see now, the task is in progress. So creating new storage comment, uh, sorry, creating new storage group, add existing volumes to company DB prod, refreshing storage group, and uh, the last step is creating masking view. Uh, so here we can see a green a green mark for success for success. So it has succeeded. Click on OK, and here we should be able to see it. Company DB project. Here it is. Uh, let's select it for having more visibility. I just click on it, and here we can see uh, properties of this new storage group. Here we have the one masking view. So this is the masking view. I am going to, I'm going one step back. I went far. So let's click on compliance. So here we can see everything is looking good because this is a new volume, but um, uh, this power max system used to be on uh, the latency used to be under the milliseconds. Uh, so here we can see the response time. Talking about IOPS, so this is a new volume. Nothing is uh, nothing is working right now here, but this is a good reference in the future for for your provisionings. So let's click on volumes, and here we are going to see four volumes, each volume of 250. And here we can see the type TDAP and the name of the volume is O2B to C to D to E. Let's go back to dashboard. So next lesson, add an additional storage group. So probably you will convert, you may need some additional volumes. So in this scenario, you will convert an storage group to a parent storage group when you add an additional shell storage group. Um, let me explain um, this in the PowerMax in the laboratory. So let's go back to the storage groups. And here we can see our, our top storage group build server. Uh, let's press select it here. And here you can see that uh, this storage group has three volumes. And the service level is called. So let's click on modify. And here we can, uh, we are now familiar with the storage provisioning wizard. And probably your customer or or the business and needs to add new volumes here with a different service level with different requirements for your for your day to day operations. So this is as easy as clicking on 
in the plus sign. So I want you to take a look here on the storage group uh, name. So once I click here, uh, the main remains the same, but a new column is added here. So for the three uh, previous volumes that were already created here, uh, they become great. And here we have a new SG name, storage group name, build server underscore web. So for the new provision that we are just about to perform, uh, it will have uh, the name with build server underscore two. So for this scenario, we are going to create just a couple of volumes with a different uh, surface level. Uh, for this uh, for this scenario, we can it can be silver. Let's select two volumes. Each volume is going to be of 200 gigabytes. And let's click on run now. So here we have the task in progress. So I'm modifying, adding a new shell SG, click on OK. So here you can see that the storage group has changed them because now it is called as parent storage group. So it has two childs. If I click on the expand icon here, I can see build server one, build server two. Okay, so this is great. So we just add a new shell storage group with, with new volumes for a different purposes on the business. Uh, let's go to dashboard. Okay, so next lesson, expanding a volume. So probably your uh, a new user is having a, a scenario where he's having alerts about 90% of usage, 95%, or probably it has a, an upcoming project that he may require more data, more capacity. So how do we perform a, an increase, volume increase? This is super easy. Let's click on storage groups. And for this scenario, uh, let's click on, on the study group that we just created, Company DB Prod. As you may remember, we have four volumes here. And let's say that probably this user needs more capacity on the very first volume, O2B. Yep, here it is. So let's select it. And here you can see that current capacity is 250 gigabyte. So when I click on expand, we can make this, uh, uh, let's duplicate the capacity from 250 to 500 gigabytes. So super easy. Let's click on run now. The task is in progress. So the unit free interface is really, uh, is really intuitive. So we can see everything uh, is under control. Click on okay. And now it's reflected. And this unit free version is reflecting the changes in the instantaneously. So here we have our expanded volume. This is it for this for this video. Thank you so much.